Hello again, this is my fifth recording on bioinformatics for absolute beginners. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about simple DNA operations using Python 3. So the first task to do here is how to find length of a DNA sequence. For this tutorial, I'm going to use this DNA sequence. You can use the reference number in NCBI and download the DNA sequence. The first thing to do is to remove paragraph markers using replace method before starting the tutorial. So I'll have a DNA, let's say DNA variable equals to gap dh dot. Well, gap dh stands for glycerol had three phosphate dehydrogenase dot replace. We've used replace in the previous tutorial. We replace it to empty string and now the DNA is fine. How to find the length of the DNA sequence? To find the length of a DNA sequence, we use len method. So let's try it out. Print len of DNA, 561 nucleotides long. To change the DNA case, we use upper and lower method. To change it for uppercase, we use upper. So upper means U for upper, DNA dot upper method. And if you print it out, it will show you the DNA sequence all in uppercase. So I purposely changed the first bit of the DNA sequence and the last bit to lowercase so that you see the difference. Now you can use the same thing using lower method and print it out, you'd see all of it in lowercase. Concatenation is joining two sequences together. So if you have, let's say, a DNA sequence, let's say this is a DNA sequence, and you want to concatenate it with another DNA sequence, you add to it using concatenation method. And concatenation method is just a plus sign in Python. So we have this variable called tail, and we want to concatenate it to DNA variable. So we say DNA equals DNA plus tail. You can concatenate it with a string as well. Just write down something, just to mark it and print out the DNA to see where it is. So this is our original DNA sequence. And from here on, we have the tail DNA sequence. To make replacements, let's say we want to replace all of the adenins in tail DNA sequence, which is something you wouldn't need to do, but sometimes you need to change something entirely in all of your variables. So if you want to change something, you'd say print, tail dot replace then you replace adenins to let's say to thymine so all of the adenins have been changed to thymine you can also do this thing with protein sequences obviously because protein sequences are also strings so you could say print my protein dot replace Let's say you want to change V to Y. Now this has been changed. Now, if you want to slice out a protein sequence, let's say from the beginning to number fifth amino acid residue, you use indices. So you'd say my protein, amino acid number three to amino acid number four, number five, let's say. And you want to print this out. You can print it out. SP, three to five. So it doesn't actually show you. So if you'd like to see alanine, you'd say five here, and it will show you SPA. How to count substrings? You use count method. To do so, we have DNA variable, and we'd like to count it. Count thymines in it. We can print this out. and it will tell you that there are 89 thiamines. How would you find the index location of a given amino acid in a protein sequence? So let's say we have my protein as a protein sequence, and you would like to find out the index location of V. So you use find method, and it will tell you it's the the first occurrence is in the index number zero, which is the first one. For the purpose of restriction digestion, you may need to use split DNA sequence or split method. So here we have two variables, 
XPAR1, which is the restriction enzyme, and my DNA sequence, which is a sequence that you'd like to digest it with XPAR1. To do so, you just print out my DNA dot split XPAR1, and this will show you two outputs in a list. How can we use this? We can put it in a variable called s for split it. Since we split it, we can now use it or in a print statement. We say s index 0, which is the first part, then concatenate it with a string just to mark that there is xpa1 in it. Then concatenate this with s1. Now, this is just like an indicator telling you that you have x bar 1 region there. This is how you do restriction digestion and in the next coming tutorials I'll give you certain tasks and then I'll show you the solutions. I hope you enjoyed this one. Should you have any questions just let me know.